Let me get my slides up. Good morning. Um, it's it's indeed a pleasure to be here with you this morning. We have a big day planned out, and um, it's nice for us to start early. Thank you for those that came in early. Thank you so much. Um, we trust that we'll be able to make good use of today. Okay? Francis, my cue is, I'll just raise my hand. That's my cue. All right. So what are we doing here? Okay. I believe we're here because we love books. We love writing. We, a lot of us are writers, authors, uh, into one form of creating we're creative, so we're into one form of creating, either by spoken word or by production or development of, you know, content. Am I correct? Am I correct? Okay, I love response. All right, so let's, um, if we need some water or whatever it is, let's, let's, let's be here. Um, so what I want to do today is basically talk a bit about publishing, get the technical stuff sorted out before, you know, we get into the arts and the rest of it. So I want to talk a bit about publishing and um, my task. Um, this is what I call my prayer. My prayer is that I'll be able to introduce to you basically the concept and intricacies of publishing and hopefully well, I was allotted 20 minutes, but I, uh, I have more time today. So I'll, I'll take some time on the actual intricacies of publishing, what it entails. And then I will open up the floor so that we can ask questions. Because it's more important to me that there's understanding than for me to spend the time talking. So I'll do half of my time talking and then half of my time listening and responding to your questions. Um, my goal is to leave you with the impression that anybody can publish. I, if I can achieve that, then I'll be quite satisfied. Apart from the honorarium that I'm going to get from Pastor Dele. Have you? Right? Um, but I put a caveat there. And the caveat is, can we all see the screen? Can we all see the screen? Right from the back? Yeah, okay. It's not a course in publishing. I mean, I was allotted 20 minutes initially, so I'm not, you're not going to be trained in terms of modules, Right? So it's not a course in publishing. So we're not going to talk a lot about the art form. We're just going to talk about um, s the information you will need to arm yourself in, if you want to intend to go into publishing. So it's really very elementary. So it's going to be basically about the practice and the details that needs to be understood if you want to go into publishing. And of course, um, we all know that there's a difference between a writer and an author. Am I correct? Is there a difference? There is a difference. Right. So we can all write. I, I, I presume that even if it's spoken word, it takes some writing also. We can all write. At least we can all imagine. Am I correct? But we're not all authors, and we're not all going to be authors, because a lot of people don't take that leap of faith. Okay? Um... There's this quote here. Publishing a book is like stuffing a note into a bottle and hauling it into the sea. Very apt. So what happens is you don't know what's going to happen. And that's the reality. Even if you are a practiced author and you're renowned and you have you know, books that have done bestsellers, the next one you write, you don't know what's going to happen. So you're going to have to take a leap of faith. Okay, so at the end of the day, just do it. All right? So what's a publisher? A publisher is a group, organization, company, or individual who is responsible for originating the product of a publication. Okay? 
and most importantly bears the risk and the cost of doing this so you 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 won't be called a publisher if you're not bearing the risk and the cost understood and there are different types of publishers and we'll go into that a bit more in a bit more detail but i want this to sink in so um you're going to produce a book it could be a journal a magazine a periodical whatever it is that's why it's called a product you're going to produce it. So you're going to bear the risk and the cost of producing it. Once you're going to engage in that line of action, then you're a publisher. So how many publishers do we have in the room today? One, two, three. Napa, you're a publisher now. Your hands are not up. Four. Raise up your hands. You should be proud of this profession. Come on. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Beautiful. Six. So hopefully by the end of this session, hopefully many of us will want to be publishers. So the idea here is to understand that there is a risk and there's a cost. Can I go to the next slide? Um, book publishing offers you the opportunity to work as a team. Um, if, you, if you've ever in, been involved in teamwork right book publishing is one of those endeavors that you cannot do it alone it's not possible for you to work alone so if you don't like working in the team you can't do publishing it's teamwork and it's a big team because as a writer you write alone typically you you will just lock yourself up in a quiet place you know and imaginate and write and you know but when it comes to publishing, you're going to work in the team. It's, it, the team can be large, it can be small, but it's teamwork. Um, you're going to work with bookworms. You're going to pull resources. Um, you're going to work with people that enjoy the process because it is a labor of love, actually. Now, it's important to understand that like every endeavor, you start with a lot of enthusiasm and drive but if you don't have what it takes you're going to get weary along the way so if you have a project um 250 page book needs to be ready by end of august and yeah so you've gotten out the page planning done and everything you want to start the actual preparation to publish and then one setback after the other one issue comes up this issue comes up and if you don't have the strength and the and the right team behind you you're going to miss the deadlines. You're going to get frustrated. You might not come up with the quality that you're looking out for. You might not get the back end sorted. You might not get the front end, which is the marketing sorted. So it takes a lot of effort. Um, it's, it takes a lot of grit. But at the end of the day, it's because of the love of books that we do this. So exposure um, is the word used when you want to avoid talking about sales so I want to give my book exposure I want it to be out there but the reality is at the end of the day you're publishing so you can sell I know we're Christian writers but we're publishing so we can sell right and that's why I did the definition before we went too far if you're not planning to sell your book you're not really a publisher no 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 because basically what you're doing is probably just distributing books Yes, yeah, so you can just get a printer, it does the book, and just distributes it. Because publishing also involves distribution for sale. So at the end of the day, you must have at the back of your mind exactly why you're publishing, what the reach is, what the audience is, what the um, potential income is. So all that goes into your um, planning for publishing. Right? So you must be thinking about sales. You must be thinking about, because, I mean... A lot of times you, you underestimate the work that goes into the selling. You put all the energy into the publishing. And then at the end of the day, you have the books in the warehouse. How do you push them out there? So <laughs> start with the end in mind. All right? I don't, you're going to have to sell the books. So if you need to hawk it on the streets, you must have a plan going into that. So we are in the age of the know-how. 
Um, so for a writer who aspires to be an author, knowing how to publish is very essential. Even if it's just so that you, when you speak to a publisher, you know the terminology, you know what to expect, you know what to do, and all that. So essentially, you need to know. So even if you don't intend to publish yourself, self-publish, you still need to understand the rudiments and the process. So when you're speaking to publishers or you're speaking to your team, you understand the lingo. Um, technology has opened up you know, e every door, essentially. So maybe half a century ago, you would sit down and write a manuscript, type it out on your rustic typewriter, and you will take that manuscript and begin to hunt for a publishing house. Yeah. yeah. About 50 years ago, you will take your manuscript, tie it up, you know, well-typed, double-line space, and you're hunting for a publishing house. It could take you a month, a year, 10 years. There are a lot of manuscripts still lying in someone's, you know, garage or drawer that they couldn't get a publishing house. Today, WhatsApp. <laughs> You're publishing on the go. Right? So the reality is, more than any other time, we all have an opportunity to publish. Technology has opened all the doors. So really, there is no excuse why we can't publish. Um, so whether you want to do the traditional experience of publishing or you want to go into the, you want to use technology to publish your book, um, everything is within reach today. Everything is within reach. So um, the mindset is, what is stopping you? Nothing. So you need to understand that today, I mean, 50 years ago, there were real challenges. Today, the only challenge is your mind. Nothing else. It's not even finances. It's just you. That's the only barrier you have today. Okay? So, there are basically two ways to publish. Who knows the two ways? Anybody? Okay, everybody's quiet. Uh, two ways to publish. Sorry? Thank you. So, there are only two ways to publish. Either you go the traditional route or you self-publish. Now, in the traditional route, what you're basically doing is that you are giving the rights to a publisher. And the rights involve the rights to market and distribute and then share the income with you, depending on the formula, depending on the, the kind of agreement you reach. There are different types of agreements. So it's never a 50-50 arrangement. Never. It's never, it's never a 50-50 arrangement. Sometimes all you get is royalties. Okay? And when you, if you give out your rights to a publishing house and all you're getting is royalties, what it means is that depending on the contract you sign, you don't own the book any longer. Okay? So... The publisher, the in traditional, um, the roots, the publisher handles the marketing, distribution, warehousing, and it's at no expense to the author. It has no expense whatsoever to the um, to the author, and um, the publisher makes profit and pays you whatever you've agreed. So at times you see books out there, million copies sold, and you're thinking, oh, this man has made a million dollars. In your mind, you're calculating the you have no idea what contract he signed. Okay? So, that is traditional publishing. But self-publishing, depending on the type of platform, publishing platform you choose, the majority of the work falls on your shoulders and you pay for all the expenses. So, you get your team together, you, you know, manage the process, but you retain all the rights to your book and you make 100% of the profit, if there is any profit, or 100% of the loss in a lot of the cases. So, those are the two routes to publish. Now, you need to, you need to understand that there is no good way or bad way. It's just depending on the circumstance and the context of the book that you want to publish. So, sometimes you want to do it yourself. Sometimes you want to go to a publisher. And um, I, I put a list of publishing houses in the country at the appendix. And I'm sure that can be circulated to us. Um much later after the meeting and all that. So you can look at the different publishing houses in Nigeria, some of them. I think I have over six of them here. But self-publishing is a very viable way of doing it. Um, so if you decide to do self-publishing, you know, 
it works but there's no good way or bad way so let's let's take it one after the other um however even in traditional publishing you have the options the options are limitless so even in traditional uh, publishing you'll discover that you have the option to print an ebook do an audio book do a dvd book you know whatever you want to do so the fact that you're doing traditional doesn't mean that it always has to be a hard copy book yeah so quite a lot of traditional publishers will even advise you to start with an ebook and then before you do the hard copy and there's something called print on demand um we'll talk about it a bit more which is also a very good way to publish now if you decide to pick an ebook um we all know what an ebook is i think kindle made that very popular some years back so if you decide to pick an ebook you need to uh, well the advantages of ebook is that translation is very cheap i mean it's there are softwares that do translation distribution is very easy um, um in fact it's easier to manage but there's also the piracy issues that come with ebooks so those are considerations so a lot of the advantages sometimes become disadvantages because the, the easier it is to publish the easier it is to pirate okay but in our environment we understand that piracy is like norm so that's a different discussion i think there's there's another session that talks a bit about the legal issues yeah so we'll take that when that comes up okay but the advantages of the ebook is you can't even deny it it's so easy to 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 go ahead and just publish an ebook um and then it's um easy to distribute essentially and the thing about ebook it never goes out of print um one of the things about publishing is that once you once a book goes out of print going back into production takes a lot of consideration are you going to do another version of the book are you going to edit it again are you going to update it you know and do an extra chapter so those are the issues when you're going back to produce a book because you might have produced a, a thousand And essentially what will happen is in five years you probably learned a lot more and you probably want to add an extra chapter. So it changes the entire format of the book. Okay? So that Um, we're going to spend a lot of time talking so please if you have questions write them down and everybody here is going to ask a question I will ensure of it so please write down your questions because it has to be engaging I insist on questions any question at all Are we back? Okay, I think you can see the screens. So, um, essentially, we're going to start with traditional publishing. We've explained the process, well, the concept. As I said, we're not taking a course in traditional publishing, but uh, a book publisher offers an, a potential author a contract to print publish and distribute a book now the thing about it the process is is quite extensive and um, in the Western environment you have different specialist publishing companies so there are different levels of publishing and then some companies handle different aspects of it um, the big publishing houses typically offer the whole um, gamut the range so uh, the production the, pu the publishing the production the distribution the marketing the publicity and in that environment they're all different things here everything is the same so the publicity is different from the marketing um handling the the actual the actual retail distribution of the book and stuff like that so the publisher offers you a contract you don't go to the publisher with a contract 
that's how it works. So in traditional publishing, the publisher offers you a contract. And in that contract, depending on the value that they place on the book, that's how the contract will be worded. So if they feel, they feel the book will make a lot of sales, you probably get a lot of um, profits. And typically, they always pay an upfront anyway. And um, for, for published authors, they will probably even pay you um, upfront. Okay? So you haven't written the book. All you've done is a proposal for a book, and they'll pay you upfront to write the book. That's if you're a published author already, and you feel that there's a potential in the proposal. So I will talk a bit about the book proposal further down. But the idea is the publisher offers you a contract. Now, nobody's going to offer you a contract if they don't think it's valuable. The book is valuable. Okay? So essentially, you must have something to, to talk about. I just picked up... Um, how many of you know Malcolm um, Gladwell? I just picked up Outliers yesterday, and I just couldn't drop it. And um, this is his third book. But Gladwell came out with his first book, Tipping Point. How many of you have read Tipping Point? Tipping Point? Nobody? Please get that book. So he came out with his first book, and it sold, it sold out. It was a masterpiece. Um, and so I expect that his second book will have been, publishers will have been chasing him to publish his second book because, of course, everybody wants to make money. So it's just the way it is. So essentially, the publisher offers you a contract. So if you're not a known author, you need to have a compelling case before you go to a publisher. Because um, a lot of times, we, we believe the book is a masterpiece. But if we do not have um, the right kind of structure around us to help us you know, um, judge the book, critique, critique the book, a publisher will look at it and say, no, 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 this is not going to sell. OK? Now, I understand I'm talking to Christian authors. But again, understand that publishing is also about selling. Right? Because if you just want to develop the book and send it out there, then the easiest way to do it is just to go online and do an ebook, right? But if you're going to print hard copy, every publisher wants to know how much is this book going to sell for? What is the reach? Not just how much, but how many can I sell, all right? So you could print a thousand copies of a book and sell each at a thousand naira. For any publisher, that is not a good business. You would rather print a million copies of the book and sell each at 100 naira. Do you understand? Because the more they print, the more profit they make. So a publisher wants to know how many copies of this book can I sell. So it doesn't matter how much you love your book. You still need to have a proper critic to help you look at the book and judge it and tell you what works and what will not work and all of that. So we'll talk a bit about what you call the literary agents. Um, I don't know if they're literary agents in Nigeria, but in, in, in developed um, countries, you need a literary agent. A literary agent is basically someone that introduces you to a publisher. He's just a middleman, basically. But they are practiced. It's, they are, a lot of them are authors also. A lot of them have experience. So they can look at your book and tell you, will this sell? Will this not sell? What are the things you can do to make this book attractive to a publisher and help you do, develop? In fact, they'll develop the proposal for you. So you don't even need to you know, understand how to do a proposal. Right. So um, again, for Christian authors, um, the idea is about propagating the kingdom. Am I correct? So whilst it's not so much about sales, um, your publisher will still need to understand the value of the book regarding um, the subject matter that you wanted to write about. So you could be writing about Christian marriages or you could be writing about raising teenage children. So they need to look at the subject, if it's culturally relevant, if it's appealing to the target, if it's able to elicit sales. So... Um, so deciding on the content of a book is important before you even go ahead to write because it helps you to scope. Now, again, caveat, if you're not interested in sales, it's no longer important. It's no longer relevant. You can decide on whatever and just write whatever and put it out there. People might read it. People may not read it. It's fine. But if you're interested in sales, you need to agree with your 
critic, your team, um, your advisor, what content should be put out there, even in the Christian um, book writing, so that there is an audience. So, for example, if you wrote, um, if you wrote a book, Pastor Dele, please, oh, this is on the book of Revelations, for example, you may not have an audience for it. Okay? But if you wrote a book on raising teenage children, there is a huge audience because the church today is grasping with youth. They don't understand youth. What's happening to these children? We pray with them. We talk to them. We baptize them with the Holy Spirit. We're constantly bringing them into fellowship. But they just don't, they just don't get it. They're just in their own world. So if you write on raising teenage children, Christian parents, Christian ministers would want that kind of book. So understanding what is relevant in every epoch, I mean, you're going to talk a bit about seasons, is important in selling your material. Do you understand? So it's important to prepare materials that you believe has an audience, even though we understand that, yeah, the idea is to propagate the kingdom. But because you want to publish, that has to be very clear in your mind. Now, if you're writing fiction, you typically will have to submit a proposal. Right? So if you're writing fiction, you have to submit a proposal. Um, but if you're writing non-fiction, um, a lot of times you will have to actually go ahead and finish the book before um, you can go to a publisher. Um, so let's talk a bit about the literary agent. So they... They are middlemen. So, like, a lot of us, you want to get a house, you get an agent to help you look for a house. So, it's the exact same thing. But what they do is they, they help you package your book in such a way that it's appealing to a publisher. So, that's what it is. And then you have to pay them a commission for that service. So, if you're a first author, first-time author, it's important that you get an agent. Now, I do not know if there are agents in Christian writing here. But... Um, I have two Christian publishing houses uh, in the appendix, which I'll give you their details, and you can um, call them up and talk to them about, you know, agency work. And, of course, an agent already knows the publishers, right? So, like, assuming there are, like, 50 publishers in Nigeria, most good agents will know at least half of them. So, when they see your material, they'll know the kind of publishing house that will be interested in your material. So, it's always best if you can get an agent, get an agent, but... Basically, that's really the first step, getting an agent if you want to publish traditionally. But if you're going to self-publish, um, you really don't need an agent, but you'll need a team. Okay? Um, Francis, so how do you get a contract? So, it starts again with your proposal. So, you, you now, you, you may have a finished manuscript, but you still need to do a proposal. Do you understand that? Yeah. So even though you have a manuscript, you're not just going to give your manuscript to a publishing house. If they're a professional publishing house, they will ask you for a proper proposal. All right? And so if you don't have a literary agent, you basically need to put in place a document that is like um, a business case for your book. I mean, if you understand what a business case is, just writing a business proposal. So you will typically talk about what the content is, what the audience, who the audience is, what the potential for marketing in Nigeria or out of the country is, what, you force, what your um, projections are in terms of sales and stuff like that. Again, so you just put together a proposal and get that sent to your publishers. Now, you will have to go through a lot of publishers. You need a lot of patience because they typically get a lot of proposals. And so you can't send them a proposal and expect them to respond to you within a month. It probably takes much longer than that. All right? Um, so if you're writing fiction, um, how many of you read Christian fiction? Fantastic material. I, I love Christian fiction material. Um, if you're writing fiction, you still need to go ahead and do a proposal and you need to get the manuscript completed. Um, because... If it's non-fiction, it's easier for the publisher to see the potential. But if it's fiction, they don't know what you're going to write. So you have to write the material. If it's 30 chapters, finish the 30 chapters, put the end, and then submit the proposal with the manuscript. But if it's non-fiction, so if you're writing maybe an autobiography, for example, or you're, you're writing a biography or you're 
you know so i mean if if you if anybody comes up and says oh i'm going to write about um any of our church, church leaders pa elton for example you probably get a very good um, christian publishing house that will take your proposal and just go ahead and work with you because pa elton is one of the fathers of faith in nigeria so if you wanted to write about pa elton you probably get a very good um publishing house to pick it up but you're going to write about yourself for example and you're not very well known they want you to finish the, the writing before they agree to even publish you so so non-fiction um a lot of times it's easy to judge they can gauge and say is this going to be interesting is this going to be important will people buy this da, 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 da. and then they will on the strength of your proposal they'll give you a contract and then when you get a contract you go ahead and write there, no cost to you that's the thing about traditional publishing okay all right um you can interrupt me if there are any questions right so let's talk about self-publishing has anybody here self-published before anybody self-publishing yeah four did you raise your hand self-published i salute you yeah because if you've ever done it you understand that it's tedious and the reason why it's tedious because we don't have a lot of professionals in the system all right so you probably have to do a lot of it yourself so um there are different self-publishing models um so there's print on demand there's um the vanity pub, um, publisher and then there's the subsidy publisher now i haven't actually used the print on demand because i i do not know of any company in nigeria currently that does print on demand um, um there's a book that book project i've been working on for a few months now and we we have the option of doing the print on demand in the u.s the only problem with doing the print on demand in the u.s is that you can't sell it in nigeria it's too expensive so you can sell it abroad because it's denominated in dollars but if you do print on demand and bring it into the country <laughs> It's only your family that will buy that book because it's going to be very expensive. So, um, I do vanity publishing. What vanity publishing simply means, I'll, I'll explain. I also, I've also done, I, so I typically publish Christian materials. So, you have to do subsidy publishing. Because when your pastor friend calls you and says he needs to publish a book, you don't have a choice. All right. Um, but as I said, self-publishing requires the author to invest their own money to produce, distribute, and warehouse the book. And how many of you know that warehousing a book is expensive? You know that there's a condition in which you cannot store a book. Okay? Yeah. So how many of you have shelves in the house? Yeah. So you know that your bookshelves need to be aerated. There needs to be air. You know that. So there's some conditions in which you put a book, they get moldy. So you can't publish 10,000 copies of a book and just keep them in your garage. When you open that garage after four months, you'll be shocked. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the, the idea is you need to know how to warehouse before you even decide to self-publish. Because you're going to have to warehouse. The books are not going to be sold in the next week or in the next month. It's going to take a while to sell all the books. Okay? So it's a huge commitment. It takes a lot of time. Um... But it's more cost effective in the long run if you're going to sell. All right. So let me just explain. Um, print on demand, as I said, is not. I ha I don't know. I haven't researched um, extensively, but I haven't seen any print on demand company in Nigeria. Um, but what they basically do is they print in units. They publish in units. So what, what, what you will do is you will say, well, I have this book. It's um, 300 pages. It's about speaking in thongs, for example. And I want 50 copies. They'll produce 50 copies for you. You'll have a contract with them. I have 20 more minutes. Thank you. So they'll produce 50 copies um, and then then two months down the line you call them up and say okay i need another hundred copies and they'll give you a hundred copies and then the next few months you say now get me it's expensive because the process of producing in small units is very expensive but it helps you to also manage your distribution 
and then you don't need to warehouse. Okay? So that's the way to go. Um, as I said, the only companies I know that, that do print on demand are outside of the country. So if you're going to sell in Nigeria, just understand that it's going to be a very expensive book because you have to do the conversion. Okay? Um, so that's print on demand. Um, if you want print on demand publishers to do the pre publishing work, which is the editing, the proofreading, and all that, you will need to pay for it because they won't typically do that for you. And so, as a self publisher, you must have a team. You must have a self editor, uh, an editor. You must have a, um, the entire gamut so that you, you're ready to go when you go to a POD publisher. Right. A vanity publisher is also a printer. So, um, Shomoli is the printing capital of Nigeria. So, if you are looking for a vanity publisher, you're just basically going to a press. And so, they don't really care about whether the book can sell or not. Right? You just give them your book. They will do a costing. You pay, they publish. Or they produce it. Yeah, they just produce it for you. So, um, that's basically what they do. They are really not interested in profits or whatever it is. You pay them for their services and they are gone. A subsidy publisher, on the other hand, is a printer, a press, but they take on some of the costs at an agreement. So they'll be like, okay, so pay this amount. When you sell, we'll get our profits back or we'll get part of our, you know, outlay some of our costs from there. Okay? So, um, so depending on the relationship you have with the subsidy publisher, you can either get a contract and or you could just have an agreement that says, um, okay, so it's going to cost me $2 million to publish this book. I can afford to give you $1 million. Um, after I've sold maybe 2,000 copies, I will pay the rest plus interest, whatever it is. So you can always do that with a subsidy publisher, depending. So I, I would assume that you have a lot of subsidy publishers in Christian um, circles, but I don't know. Right? Okay. So what's your team? So I talked about the team, and it's important that you understand that it's teamwork. At every point in time, you're going to need a team. So research. Um, a lot of us, how many people, how many of us here have written a book? Not, you don't have to have completed the book, but you're reading the book, maybe some chapters. You're reading the book. Hands up if you're reading the book. Hands up, hands up. Everybody? Almost everybody? Okay. Our typical research is the Bible, Abby, the Holy Spirit, right? Our pastors, right? Okay, fine. Um, sometimes the content of the book will need you to actually get more research done. So if you're talking about cultural issues, you might need to actually do dipstick surveys and stuff like that. So if you were talking about, um, for example, the topic of raising godly teenagers, for example, you might need to know what happens in different aspects of the country. So a teenager in an urban city like Lagos is not a teenager in a suburban or a rural area. So you're not going to write good content if you've not done your research or if you don't have researchers. So it's always important to do the research. So if you can't do the research yourself because of time or know-how, you need to get researchers involved. Sometimes we have what you call ghostwriters. You understand what ghostwriters are? They write, but they don't write in their name. They write for other people. So you can get that in your team if you need. If you're doing a lot of, if you're doing a lot of writing and you need some chapters to be written by other people, you can get a ghostwriter to come in. Um, you can get a writing coach. Um, I'm sure Baruch has that facility, writing coaches. Um, you need editors, different types of editors. So at every level, you need an editor. So an editor understands the context that you're writing about and can put your material in proper context. So um, if you are writing about, um, if you are writing about um, marital bliss, for example, Christian book, marital bliss. An editor will necessarily have to have to be married, understand what it entails to be able to edit your material. So it's not just when I talk about editors now. I'm not just talking about copy editors. Copy editors look more about the grammar, the syntax, which is part of the one of the um, right speakers will talk about that. 
but you need editors that also understand the context that can help you put your book in proper context. Proofreaders. Um, yeah, there, there's some proof. I didn't put the list of proofreaders that I work with here, but you need to have proofreaders. Proofreaders basically have to proof edit your book. That's another level of editing. Then you need a, a desktop publisher. A desktop publisher is a designer, graphic designer. And there are two levels of desktop publishing when it comes to publishing. All right, so you do the initial desktop publishing. So when you type, you probably type it in Word, um, A4, you're typing and all that. So when you give it to a desktop publisher, he, design, he designs the size, the structure of the book, and he does the at work, both the cover and the inside pages. The other level of desktop publishing is when you're preparing it for printing. It's a different level of desktop publishing. Okay, so some graphic designers cannot do preparation for printing. They can't prepare the book for printing. So, because you're not going to take the book the way it is and just go to the printer. You need to prepare it for printing. So, that has to be done then. Um, it depends on the kind of book. Um, cover designers are specialists. So, you might need to get a, a proper cover designer to do the cover of your book, apart from your graphic designer that just does the layout of the book. Okay? Then you might need illustrators. So I, I have a book project that needed a lot of illustration, quite a lot of illustration. I wanted to try and get a proper illustrator, but I think the cost issues were a bit more. So um, the author had to do a lot of the illustration himself and stuff like that. So Then, of course, you need to know printers. You need to know quite a lot of printers so you can compare costs and quality and look at what they've done before. Um, book identifiers. In Nigeria, we have the ISBN. Um, I'll talk about that a bit. And then distribution distribution channels as i said you need to know how to sell so before you start writing understand distribution how are books sold in nigeria how do you distribute your books um, one of the things that shuzia does very well did i pronounce that properly is also book distribution for christian authors so you're in the right place and then of course any publishing platform publishing self-publishing platforms are um are very common online you can google and research for Publishing platforms. Marketing platforms. It's important that you understand the marketing aspect of your book before you start. So understand how social media works. Um, there's going to be a talk on that, so I'm not going to spend my time. You have to understand how it works. Um, blogs are very good for marketing. So you can have video blogs. It doesn't have to be written blogs. It's very good for marketing. Um, you need to understand how to... Um, market the book from an advertising perspective. Um, you need to understand how to do tours. So you could tour churches, you could tour um, camps, you could tour various meetings, Christian meetings. You need to understand how to manage tours and seminars so you can get your books sold. You might need to work with publicists and you will need an advisor. I do a lot of self-publishing, um, well, subsidy publishing mostly. So that's where I come in. I could advise for free. So what's an ISBN? It's called the International Standard Book Number. It's basically a unique identifier, but it's international. It's 13 digits. Why do you need an ISBN? Why do you think you need an ISBN? Why do you need an ISBN? Why is it important? Exactly. It's like your plate number. So if your book ends up in Russia, okay, you can identify that book just by the ISBN. There's the last, actually, the last um, two codes, I think, it's, automa it's an automatic, it can be auto um, recognized by your computer systems, right? So the first three digits, it's an international code. So every country will have its own code also. The next three is the publisher's unique identifier. The next three is 13 digits, all right? So the next three is the title identifier. So every book has a title. And then the last two digits is the check ad um, checking digits. So it's... It helps for, uh, you know, when you go to a supermarket and then you have the barcode, right? So your ISBN has the last two digits and the, I think the last two digits for checking. So you don't need to be sure that this ISBN is correct. So anywhere the book is, anywhere in the world, anywhere it's published, if it wants to be cataloged, it's always cataloged with the ISBN digits. 
All right, to get your ISBN, if you're a self-publisher, you'll get that yourself. If you go to a publishing house, they'll get it for you. But if you're a self-publisher, you'll need to um, get a form. Um, they have an office in Lagos here and an office in Abuja. So you get a form. Um, you fill the form. And it should be written on the letterhead. Letterhead paper, properly addressed. And then you need a photocopy of your CAC, um, your Corporate Affairs um, Commission um, pay, um, document. And then you also need a copy of the book. Okay? These are the things you need for to get an ISBN. Um, it doesn't take that long. Typically, two, three weeks, a month at most. It doesn't take that long. But once you have all your documents, you have the book, you submit it at the office, you get your ISBN number. And once you get it, you just add it to your to the book. It typically comes on the second or third page of the book before the intro. Okay. Um, so their office is in Abuja. Um, you can take down their email address and their phone numbers. They have an office at the National Library of Nigeria in Yaba. All right. Yes, if you're going to apply for an ISBN, you need to have um, a CAC number. So you would use your, your own personal company to apply. Yeah. Yes, or you could use someone else's company. But they just need to know that they can identify where the, the author, sorry, the publisher of the book. Yeah, it's just, it's just to help them identify and catalog it properly. Right, so that is it. Um, I have, what, 10, 10 minutes? So I have 10 minutes. And I want to get questions from us so that we can make it more interactive. Okay. Somebody is trying to come in here. Questions very quickly. I think he doesn't know his way around. Questions? Okay, please go ahead. David. Good morning. Okay, um, so we're talking about Christian writers. So typically your critics will most likely be um, people that you fellowship with anyway. So um, within the context of Christian writing, you probably have like probably your, your fellowship, your pastors, your mentors in the church. Because I do not know of any professional Christian critic. So it will be people that you typically fellowship with, allow them to criticize the book. Because if they don't, if it goes out there and those errors, and it can be a backlash. So always allow for criticism, because before you publish, there's an opportunity to correct. Once it's published, it's out there. And it's out there forever. You know? So it's best to get a critic in before you publish. All right? Other questions? Is it, is it possible to have the same manuscript uh, published by two different houses? Yes, typically it does. It's competition for the manuscript, especially if it is um, marketable, right? So if you sign an exclusivity contract, it's not possible. So you have to understand the contract you're signing in the first place. So um, one uh, publisher could do the first edition, another publisher does the second edition. depends on if the book is hot cake. At the same time, if you don't have a contract, they wouldn't know it's happening anyway. But I don't know what the legal issues are. I think there's an issue on legality. I don't know what the legal issues are. But if you have a contract, the contract will specify if you're allowed to take it to another publisher. Yeah. Questions? Between a publishing house and an author. So, um, for example, music, music artists belong to a record label. Sometimes artists belong to artist guilds. 
but do authors, for, but in line with her question, are authors allowed to print their, you know, get their book published anywhere? Okay. Or does it, or do they belong to a specific publisher? Okay. So, um, a lot of international authors have literary agents. So they have a contract with an agent, and the agent manages them for a couple of years. Um, it could be a life contract, depending. So that will, your literary agents will be more like your manager, the way a musician will have an artist manager. Right? So you wouldn't have more than one agent. But you can work with any publisher you want to work with. A publisher is a business company. They just want to sell books. That's basically what they want to do. So if you can sell your book with 10 publishers, please go ahead and do so. But if you have an agent, you typically will want to keep your agent because you trust the agent's judgment. The agent helps you to manage the contracts, um, sort out the legal issues. Because a lot of times as creative people, as writers, you don't want to go into meetings or upon meetings and spend your energy just talking about Naira and Kobo. So you want an agent to do all that for you. But you're not tied to any publisher. But if you do have an agent, you probably have a contract with your agent. Any other questions? Okay, um, as I said, ISBN is a unique international identifier. So, um, I, I, I doubt if you can be recognized as an author if you don't have an ISBN. So when I say recognize, for example, if you wanted to enter into, um, what's this um, competition now? NLNG. The NLNG competition, for example. If you don't have ISBN, they, don't even, they can't identify as, a, as an author. So, you're not, you're, so anybody can print, right? But so that you have a unique identifier. Your book is not even you. It's your book that has a unique identifier. So that book can be taken anywhere in the world, taken up by international publishers will not even work with you if you don't have it. Um, if you wanted to reprint it overseas, they would request for it because piracy laws are very strict outside of this country. Here, it's a bit lax, but over there, you cannot just go and produce a book. Okay, so you need to have a unique identifier, and the identifier in Nigeria is called the ISBN. That's the only one we have. Okay, so it's a it's a it's a it's a huge advantage. It's not expensive. Um, it's so there's no reason why you should not have an ISBN. I don't I don't know any reason why you shouldn't have one, even if it's just a twenty page book, just get an ISBN. Okay. Another question. You mentioned you said that you know you when you are sending it to CAC or something like that you had to send the book no you're not going to CAC at all um but you mentioned the, you know sending it somewhere yeah and so, you have to include so the, the ISBN has two offices one is in Yaba the National Library of Nigeria the other is in Abuja their headquarters when you're going to submit your book to get a number you will need to fill a form and also submit your CAC documents, meaning that you must have a company that, because a company is a legally recognized entity. They can't give you a legal number if you don't have a legal identification. So nobody knows Olumide Campbell in Nigeria. I, nobody cares. But if I have Olumide Campbell Incorporated Limited, Olumide Campbell Incorporated Limited can be held liable by law. Do you understand? Yes. But I myself, as a person, I'm not, I, I, I can't, uh, you know, so I would. I would only apply for an ISBN because I have that legal identity. So you could use your company, you could use a friend's company, you could use your husband's company, it doesn't matter, to apply for the ISBN with a form and the manuscript. But you apply at the ISBN office. You don't go to CAC to apply. Now I understand. You yeah. said with the manuscript. Because when you were talking earlier, you said with the book. So I was thinking within me, how do you... Oh, sorry. When you do, yes, you mentioned book. Yeah. I did mention book. That's that why it's good to clarify. Please, yes. questions. We have just about two, three minutes left. Questions, questions, questions. Clarifications. Quickly, quickly. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I have two questions. Can you actually um, differentiate between a proofreader and an editor? Not an editor, a copy editor. Okay. And then also, in Nigeria, are there actual publishers from your definition of publishing yeah, yeah. that will take you from beginning up yeah, to marketing. Quite a bit. Yeah, I have, I have them here. So, um, so, some of the references for what I just did, but publishing. So, everybody knows University Press, right? Okay, so they do have a publishing arm. We've all heard of um, Farafina, right? So, the company is called Kachifo. 
and they've done a lot of work. They've worked with Chimamanda. Um, the new gong, um, new gong is, they've done quite a lot of work too. So they are publishers. Um, the information is available with um, the coordinators. They'll pass that across to you. Um, Black Tower Prints, they are Christian based. They are publishers. Cassava Republic, they are publishers. They've done quite a lot of books. They, they've worked with a lot of big authors. Um, Bookcraft, um, they've actually worked with um, Chino Achebe also, so they're very good. Um, they've been in the country for years. Verbatim Communication, they're also faith-based. So they are, they are proper companies that start with you from beginning to the end. Okay? Just to know that there is a cost attached to it because they are in it for profit. Okay? They are in it for profit. So you're not going to go to them and say, please help me. It, it doesn't work. Do you understand? Yeah, right? So, um, but if you, if you need to get a team, the first, the, I, I would say the most important part of your team will be to first get a critic, an advisor, someone that can tell you the context of the book, and then get a proper editor for the book. So for Christian books, for example, it's very difficult to see topic editors. So it probably will be people that you look up to in the faith. So if you're writing a an academic book, for example, you will go to your professor in university as to help you with editing, right? But this is Christian, so you will probably just need a mentor in the faith. Because again, it's important to get the context of your book right. You might have the content, but the context is very, very important. Um, okay, what was the second question? Okay, so a proofreader is read for typos. Check for typos, right? Um, a lot of the copy editing comes with syntax, grammar, stuff like that. Now, if your proofreader does copy editing better for you, because I have a proofreader that does copy editing. You understand what I'm saying? But you could give any secretary to do proofreading. Anybody can do proofreading. You can give it to your sister, your brother. Anybody can do proofreading for you. So it's just to check for typos. So. A lot of times it's done electronically, but it's also best to do manual proofreading. Because sometimes um, when you're using a, a word processor that is, um, that is programmed to edit English, American English is different from British English. And so if you use electronic, you might still need to do manual because sometimes you get those mistakes because the system just has a glitch. Right? But you also will need a proper editor and you will need both a context editor and your copy so that the person that is looking at your copy is basically looking at the sense you're trying to convey so you might have um uh, and especially because they need to also the smaller book is always better because for a publisher it's cheaper to produce so you could say um something in two lines that you said in three paragraphs so if you have a very good editor they will help you to get that done so that's so that's the difference. So a lot of times we give it to proofreaders, and proofreaders essentially will just check your spellings. That's what they will do. Okay? Any other questions? I think it's time to... Good morning, everyone. So um, I just want to ask if there is a clear-cut way of getting your marketing right, especially if you're self-publishing. Is there a way of getting it right? Cause plan, plan, plan. <laughs> That's the only way to get it right. You need to plan, but you need to understand what marketing is. Okay? So, um, so I, I have people that come and tell me that um, I'm, I'm going to publish this, a thousand copies, and I ask you, how are you going to sell it? Um, uh, my guys in school, my friends, and I'm like, how many are they? Do you have a thousand friends? Because if you're going to sell a thousand copies, you must have a thousand friends. And he's like, um, well, they're about a hundred. So, you need to understand how it is sold. Um, what kind of market do you have access to? There's a market for everything, but which one do you have access to? So those are the questions. We don't have time to go into the intricacies. Marketing is a, it's a thing. People are paid to do the marketing. So it's not something that you just happens. Okay? Francis, last slide. Um, go on. I think we're done. Are there any other questions? I'm still available to take questions anyway. Okay. Um, 
that's it. Okay. Some of the titles I have published, um, as I said, mainly Christian books. I haven't published for you yet. So, eh? All right then. Thank you.